we just relay some facts, whether they're new or antique. So just sit back and relax. It's time for What's Up This Week. Hello, and welcome to What's Up This Week, your weekly dose of history, facts, and trivia from University Branch Library. This week, we're looking back at the ditty, which has been described as the novelty song that never went away. Sir Mix-a-Lot's Ode to the Derriere, Baby Got Back, hit number one on the Billboard Top 100 on July 4th, 1992. The song came about from a conversation between Mix and his girlfriend at the time, Amelia Dorsey, about the media's lack of representation of full-figured women. He decided to dedicate a song to the opposite of the thin, valley girl-esque beanpole models that were all over the covers of fashion magazines. The video, which features Sir Mix-a-Lot singing and a group dancing on a giant golden artificial rump, was briefly banned by MTV after, quote, many, many complaints. Upon hearing the news, Mix worried that his career was over until his publicist told him, no, no. Now you're the forbidden fruit. Now you're really going to sell some records. MTV quickly relented and agreed to air the video, but only after 9 p.m. Sir mix is often asked how he feels about the song now. His response, I love it. I sing it all the way back to my house after getting my royalty checks out of the mailbox. That's it for me. What do you have for us this week, James? Thank you, Daniel, and hi, everybody. Mary Bethune spent her career pushing for progress across the United States. She began life as Mary Jane McLeod on July 10, 1875 in Maysville, South Carolina, as the daughter of former slaves. She attended a mission school, a seminary, and later graduated from Chicago's Moody Bible Institute in 1895. Soon she married Albertus Bethune and took his last name. For a while, she taught at multiple small schools in the South. Then in 1904, Mary Bethune widened her educator's scope and opened a school for black girls in Daytona Beach, Florida. Building the schoolhouse involved assistance from folks in the black community as well as the white community. The school merged with another in 1923 and turned into a co-educational college. It is now Bethune-Cookman University. Mary Bethune served as its president until 1942. Her objective throughout these decades was to advance education for black people and to strengthen race relations, in addition to fighting for women's rights. From 1935 to 1944, Bethune served as Franklin D. Roosevelt's special advisor on minority affairs. During that time, she became a director of the National Youth Administration, a federal agency. She helped to persuade the NYA to develop its policies and create a fund to aid black graduate students and black colleges. Bethune accomplished all of this and far more. It's apparent that no matter how she was challenged, Mary Bethune ceaselessly formed beneficial solutions with a commitment to something greater. All right, Megan, what is this week's weird thing? Hi there. This week's weird thing is that July 8th is National Video Game Day. This fun holiday dates all the way back to 1991. And for some reason in 1997, it was moved to September 12th. And now people sort of celebrate both days. Why not? Video games include arcade games, computer games, console games, mobile app games, and virtual reality games. There are a lot of different genres of video games which are defined by their type of gameplay and their purpose. There were some very rudimentary video games developed as early as the 1940s, and in 1961, MIT students created a game called Space War, which is widely considered to be one of the first recognized video games. Then, things started really ramping up in the 1970s. The 1970s saw the rise of both arcade video games and in-home gaming consoles. 
The first at-home gaming system, the Magnavox Odyssey, was released in 1972, the same year as Pong, a popular simple table tennis themed game. Pong was inspired by a ping pong game included with the Magnavox Odyssey. And yes, there was a lawsuit and more companies went on to rip off this game concept. But Pong is still the game we all remember, isn't it? Other popular games from this golden age of video games include Asteroids, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Frogger, Galaga, and Mario Brothers. In 1983, the video game industry in America crashed due to several factors, including an inundation of poor quality games, loss of publishing control, and the rise of home computers. This crash helped Japan take the lead in the video game industry for the next few years, and in 1985, the Nintendo Entertainment System was introduced to the world. In the 1990s, we see the first handheld video gaming consoles, like Nintendo's Game Boy, emerge on the market, along with CD-ROMs and improved computer graphics for at-home gaming. In the late 90s, internet gaming began to take off as well. Soon after, mobile gaming on smartphones and tablets took the place of handheld consoles. The latest developments in video games include virtual reality and augmented reality games. Who knows what will be next? If your favorite video game or video gaming console didn't get a mention in this segment, I do apologize. There's just too much to cover. If you want to learn more about the history of video games or what it takes to design them, we've got library materials available for you to check out. Happy Video Game Day, everyone! Time to get gaming! Be sure to tune in again next week for more facts and trivia from University Branch Library.